Hey, a pleasure. Good day, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric, and I'm coming at you live from the shore. Well, not live, but on a video from the shore today as we are going to talk about a 1 2 3 76ers closing it out without Joel Embiid in Game 5 to win four games to one against those Washington Wizards, Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal. The Sixers really stomped on them. They really played well in the first three games, and Bede really brought the ante. They kept going to him as they should. They kept feeding him the rock, playing through him, and that worked tremendously. Then, unfortunately, in Game 4, as we all know, Joel and B got that partial meniscus care. And then, sorry, I should call from the machine in the background. And then he had to come out of the game, and it seemed like the Sixers couldn't really adjust too well in-game in order to make that adjustment in Game 4 in order to win that game. But going from Game 4 to Game 5, Doc Rivers, like he said, it seemed he had 10 different lineups, was really thinking it through with the coaches. It seemed like they really brainstormed this well and laid out an outline really well for what to do without Joel Embiid being active. And that was a very effective game plan. They were able to spread the ball around more. There's also landscaping going on in the background. Spread the ball around more and actually have a very successful all-around game performance through just making it play like more like Spurs basketball and having Ben Simmons play more aggressive and just feeding the rock around. I mean, Seth Curry crushed his 22-point playoff high, scoring 30 points. Russell Westbrook was overrated in that game by a long shot. I mean, there are people saying, uh, the few, I mean, he is a future Hall of Fame, but the future Hall of Fame, Russell Westbrook, was the, one of the main reasons, along with Bradley Beal, they were even kept in that game. Early on, yes, but finishing 7 for 20 ain't that nice. <laughs> I mean, finishing 7 for 20 when you're one, supposedly one of the best point guards in the league, that's not a good stat line. Yes, you had over 20 points, but you finished 7 for freaking 20. That's a bad Allen Iverson game stat line. So... I don't think he really played that well in the final game, honestly. He played well early on. As the game went on, the Sixers really figured out how to stop him, and he was not effective really much at all in the second half. And actually, it's probably a detriment to his team because he kept bitching about little things, and that can affect the team in the negative when it's just like, dude, shut up and just play. You're not getting the foul calls. You're not going to get them if you just keep talking. Probably going to annoy the refs more and be less likely to get foul calls, honestly. But... The Sixers, um, on the Sixers' side, the Sixers played amazing yesterday for not having Joel Embiid. We hope he's going to be able to come back in as soon as possible, obviously, for the next series, as our Philadelphia 76ers um, will be taking on the Atlanta Hawks, since they were able to beat the Knicks 103-89 to yesterday to end their series four games to one. The Sixers should obviously be able to beat Atlanta. You obviously have to watch... Uh, Trey Young is the biggest culprit you're going to have to watch on Atlanta. And then you're also going to have to watch out for guys like uh, Hunter, guys like obviously former 76er. Um, you're going to have to watch out for, oh no, no, Thad Young's not on that team. My, my apologies, I don't know why I thought he was on that team. But you're going to have to watch out for different guys. And Noah Gallinari's been known to have good games um, against the Sixers. Bogdan Bogdanovich can obviously shoot the rock. Um, Clint Capella and John Collins will be interesting, particularly if Joel Embiid isn't going game one, how are you going to match up against them? Because he has a partial meniscus tear. It seems like he should be able to come back, but you don't want to rush these because those are nothing to mess with. Those can get bigger and become something worse if you kind of push it too strong. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Sixers monitor and be what they do going forward. I, I don't think... If he's not fully healthy, you should use the same game plan we used in the first three games because that's just going to run him into injury. No matter, you have to protect your player, which I think Doc will do as a head coach in some instances. And if you just play through Joel when he comes back with a partial meniscus tear, I don't think that's the right move like you did in the first three games. It worked really well because he was fully healthy and didn't have a partial meniscus tear. Now that he does... You have to adjust the game plan. You should kind of spread the rock like you did last game 
and not just play all through and B because I think you're just setting him up for failure and injury at that point since he already has a partial meniscus care. And that's what I look forward and expect the Sixers to do going into the next series. I hope you all enjoyed this short reaction video. Our 1, 2, 3, 7, and 6 are moving on to face those Atlanta Hawks in the second round as they beat the Washington Wizards four games to one and would have beat them four games to nothing if Joel did not get injured. And Ben Simmons, who we have to uh, also compliment in this one, was actually able to hit his foul shots in game four. That's all people are saying. People aren't trying to get on Ben like, oh, you should trade him or anything along that line. Well, some people are, but that's not what we're saying here. You just got to make your foul shots to win the game. You can't have a hack a shack, a hack a Ben, a hack a Dwight to lose a game, which is what Ben became in that game. Then he really worked on his foul shooting in between games and actually did very well yesterday, which is a big reason why the Sixers were able to actually win that game and come back in that game. So congratulations and kudos to him for really working on it. We're going to have to keep to see that improvement keep going up at the foul line. It probably should have happened quicker, but at least it's happening now. So you don't see those things happening as time goes on. This was a good series. It was a great final game for Ben Simmons to be able to realize, play more aggressive even when Joel's in. You can do it. You can do more things than you even have done this far. And then also just smartly when Joel comes back, don't play 100% through him going into the next series. Otherwise, that could cause problems. I hope you all have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Let's go, Sixers. Let's keep this thing right on rolling, and let's pray and hope that Joel Embiid's health is going to be good and peachy keen for the next series. Peace out, everybody.